Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Jermaine Crawford, and you are watching Ricky Smiley Online. So we were introduced to you when you were younger on mm -hmm. the road as Dookie. And I also read that online, like your first love was music, right? Absolutely. So like, what is your love for, um, like, for the arts come from? Um, I'm going to say it comes from my dad. Uh, he's a singer. Uh, a minister of music in church, of course. I grew up in church in the in the choir singing, and I just fell in love with the stage there, just the art of performance and singing and entertaining and that kind of give and take with the audience and just like that energy. So um, it started at a very young age for me. Okay, and so what has life been like since The Wire? So I know you dropped your EP, so what has life been like from then to now? Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been a wonderful ride, just um, I've been able to have a hand in so many different things. I've been able to do a lot of great filming projects with great you know, directors and writers, but um, I've also got into writing myself, especially mm -hmm. with my music. And um, I've just been staying busy, just exploring and uh, exploring my artistry. Uh, the Wire was such a huge show and it was you know, an honor to be a part of it and, and play such a key part of it. Right. So there, there was definitely a period of time where I had to figure out, okay, what do I want to do next? You know, do I do I want to still be this actor? Do I want to finally explore song? Do I want to do both? Do I want to be a writer? Um, but to be honest, it wasn't until this pandemic oh, really? <laughs> that yeah. I had this opportunity to really just reflect and hone in on all of my 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 skills and just say, you know, if mm -hmm. this is what God has given me, I can do all things. Right. So speaking of music, so the EP, it was me, not you. So yeah. what's the meaning behind that that title? Because that's pretty deep right there. Well, it's about um it's it's about uh just self-discovery. Right. And of course, um hindsight vision, uh thinking back on the past mistakes and of course being in a relationship and messing up the relationship really bad. Uh, <laughs> there just came a point, especially during the pandemic where I had to like realize like, you know, it was me, <laughs> it, it was me and not you and just kind of owning up to that. And I have begun to use my music kind of like a diary or like a journal. And um, now that I've got, a, got that off my chest, I think I can move forward and just kind of enter into the next chapter. All right. So why do you think that it takes um, leaving a relationship or, or the relationship to go bad for you, someone to realize that it was actually like a good thing? Sometimes the best uh, teacher is a bad experience. You know, when things go so smoothly, you kind of get like, I guess, cocky and arrogant. Well, not arrogant, but you're just so complacent. You, you don't learn anything when everything is going good. I mean, once again, like this pandemic, it kind of took for the whole world to really shut down in a major way for a lot of people to kind of look at themselves and spend that time with themselves and really look in the mirror and say, damn, okay, I've got some things I need to work on. So um, unfortunately, sometimes heartbreak will teach you a lot. And um, yeah, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I'm, I'm alive to tell the story. Right. I, I will. Um, so, what do you think is like the biggest lesson you learn within heartbreak? Uh, in my per particular situation, I think the biggest lesson I learned in heartbreak is that um, it's normal. Mm. It's normal. You can't yeah. predict what's going to happen and. Like kind of like the music. I mean, my music, I write all my music and it's very personal. One of the lyrics is, you know, I was scared that you would walk away. So I made the worst mistake. And sometimes you're so scared of just where it's going to go in the future. Like, dang, are we going to get married? Am I going to engage? Or, ah. Yeah, I can so, relate to that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's just like, you know what? Just let go and enjoy the experience. I was grateful to experience you. And maybe if that's all it was, then that's all it was. But, um, just, just let go. Heartbreak happens. And one day I might be lucky and it'll be happily ever after. But until then, you know, I just got to sign up for the experience and wherever it goes, it goes. You sound, you seem like, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I'm there with you. I, we're here. <laughs> so right. speaking of your lyrics. Okay. So the title track, okay. I'm gonna read the lyrics. So I should have been faithful. 
I should have been honest. I wasn't ready to keep my promise, but you were my first love. And I feel like this story just plays out like so much in real life. Like I said, like I really can relate to that. So again, was this like a true experience for you? Like, can we get very like a little, a little story time? Since very, very true. Um, I mean, just being transparent. I was living in New York and I was being too exploring of the city. And I stepped out of a situation and I broke this girl's heart. And um, yeah. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Usher sitting here. So <laughs> like, it, it was kind of like that that experience where it was just like, damn, like I, I, I should have just been transparent about how I was feeling and just yeah. like my fear of where this relationship would go. And because of that, I, I copped out, I took the easy road and I just kind of had this temporary experience that kind of boosted my ego in the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 an ugly truth to put out there, but uh, it was healing for me. Right. So would you say that this project was um, healing for you? So I know you talked about self-discovery and, you know, telling, you know, using this project as like a journal. So what what was the vibe you were going for when you were creating this? Just be honest and just like, um, just let it out. Right. Just let it out. Even like on the whole project, I mean, it's a very, very kind of, I mean, I'm not going to say emotional, but it's a very emotional project. The, the lyrics are very heavy. It's about wishing I could go back in time and right my wrongs, but here we are. So it is what it is. But yeah. moving forward, I would, I'll do it differently. And that's really what the whole project is kind of about. Right. It was really deep. Even like the song People, like I was like, this is deep. That's my mom's favorite song. I actually did not. I wasn't in a rush to put that on the, the track on the um, EP. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, my mom was like, that's that's that that one resonates. That one resonates. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, my mom has a great ear. So right. um, I think especially for this time with all of like the riots, that's kind of when I started really thinking about like, okay, maybe it is a good time to put that kind of record out there just to let everybody know that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. We're all experiencing different things. We're all going through things and, you know, we're just doing our best. Everybody's doing their best with the right. cards that were dealt. And the new year is coming up. Uh, what can we expect from you in 2021? More music. Um, more performances. I'm really excited to start <clears throat> getting into that performance space and now taking the art of music to the next level and kind of really getting in people's faces and having that whole experience. Um, I, I've done a lot of writing. Uh, I wrote my first film with one of my good friends and, you know, we're in a, a good place close to selling it. And Okay. If that goes as planned, I would love to come back and talk about it. But um, sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure within the next couple of months, there'll be some type of announcement about it made. And, um, you know, I'm just I'm just ready to be used as a vessel and to just get it all out. You know, uh, I think, you know, it's important to write. And um, I'm just writing it one lyric, one page at a time. I was going to say, what's what's your favorite writing, like movie scripts or writing music? Um, well, I mean, I think everyone releases a different type of energy for my, for my music. I get to be really personal with my life mm -hmm. with, with film writing. I get to kind of go more into like my imagination, uh, right. that fantasy exploration, kind of painting a world that I want to see mm -hmm. but with my music. I get to just be honest. That's like the most healing for me. So I, I guess I would have to say my music. Okay. That's good. Okay, so I, I was doing a little digging and I mm -hmm. saw on your Twitter that this during quarantine was the first time you ever watched Boondocks. All right, so when I was on the wire, right? <laughs> Maestro, Tristan, and Julito, it like we did the wire like 06 or 7 or 08. And mm -hmm. um they were just so on the show, but I was younger than everybody, so I didn't really understand the jokes. Okay, gotcha. And I don't know, when I kind of got older, I felt like, well, I'm too old to watch cartoons. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, HBO Max, ample time to kind of watch right. things. And I, I watched one episode and I'm like, yo. It's good. This is like a woke, woke, woke thing. And the jokes are like crazy, but right. the writer was just genius. And of course, Regina King is playing like 
two characters. Right. It's it's a great show. I'm I'm, I'm really late, but um, right. I'm enjoying it. I'm still getting through it as we speak. I was going to say, what else have you been watching or what else have you been doing to pass time while we've been on quarantine? Just lots of movie watching, lots of lots of movie watching. You know, there was that Undoing on HBO. That was great. Oh, that. that was so good. Um, I'm, of course, I kind of have this thing for HBO shows right. and movies. I guess I'm a little biased. But yeah, I do I do a lot of movie watching, mainly the suspense thrillers. Those are like my oh, favorite. Yeah. You got to tell me though, because that's my favorite kind too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, suspense thrillers are my favorite. Like anything that that's got like a nice twist, right. I'm kind of I'm kind of into it. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just I like a darker story, something mm -hmm. kind of grounded. Netflix and chilling is cool too, but you can't do the chilling so much now right. that you know you gotta wear masks. Right. <laughs> but before I let you go, I gotta put you on the spot. I need you to sing your favorite Christmas song right now. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Okay. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Oh, my God, so good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, and we can't wait to see more of you in 2021. To be continued.